Welcome to the Ad Heart Podcast, inspiring forward movement and heart powered intention. I'm Deborah Rosman. I'm your podcast host, and our October Ad Heart Podcast is Ad Heart to Leadership. And, you know, I've been pondering myself as the leader and CEO of HeartMath Incorporated. What does it mean to be a leader these days? It's certainly changing. What's going on in the world is requiring leaders to become more attuned to not only what customers want, but our staff, our people, the people we're supposedly leading. And of course, HeartMath's focus is on heart-based or heart-centered leadership. And that means to lead others with the qualities of the heart first. That means putting attitudes and qualities and feelings of appreciation, compassion, care, kindness, respect, dignity, authenticity, humility, lots of heart qualities we can choose from, but really leading with one or two of those in our interactions and in our communications. And that enables any of us, certainly more me, for myself, to be more present, more attuned to the needs of the people that I'm working with, more flexible and more intuitive. And so leading with heart, has a lot of benefits as well as saving a lot of stress. And as leaders in today's world, we are really being called on to care for each other more, to get along with each other in new ways, whether we are leading an organization, a team, a community, or our family, or even leading ourselves, our own system. The times are so emotionally challenging and so changing. It is so important for us to come together and it's in the heart that we really do connect with each other. So with something like half of all workers these days considering quitting their job in the so-called great resignation from the pandemic, it's affecting nearly every employer right now. And some companies are getting a lot of job applicants because they know they're caring companies and people want to work for them. Uh, Survey by LinkedIn showed that 74% of those survey indicated that their time spent at home in isolation, basically working from home in the pandemic, had them really rethink their values, their work situation. And many cite the stress and burnout and lack of appreciation, lack of career direction is why they really want to change to something else. And that's where the heart in ourselves and the heart and leadership comes in because leading with the heart, we really can connect with who we truly are and our own intuitive guidance. And that's why my guest today is Marilyn Tam. And Marilyn is a heart-centered person that she's formerly president of Reebok, president of Veda, vice president of Nike. She was voted one of the top 100 leadership speakers in the world by Inc. Magazine. And she's a humanitarian. A leader of her heart has a much higher set, uh, opportunity to be successful because in today's world, you have to ask the question, not only of just the financial and logistical and technical aspects of, of whatever it is that you're doing. The most important key is the humanity, the human aspects of it, because that really is where it is gonna make for failure or success. And as you mentioned, that we have the highest quit rate since um, they started measuring. <laughs> Actually, um, uh, that's a, a Bureau of Labor Statistics that is for the, this last year is the highest quit rate since they started measuring this wow. because people are making choices and they make choices based on their heart. Because mm -hmm. what happened with this pandemic is that people realized the fragility of life mm. and what is the value of being a heart-centered person is much different from what is the value for being a quote successful, you know, charging hard person. That's a very different scenario. And people now value heart-centered values much more than ever before. Yeah, when you're not working in a high stress environment, mm -hmm. you have time to really ponder, do I wanna go back to that? Why, you know, mm -hmm. what on earth for? And what else can I do? And, mm -hmm. you know, 
one of the things that we find in our work with organizations, we work with a lot of hospitals and companies mm -hmm. and certified trainers at HeartMath within those organizations or consultants who train within them. One thing we find is the yearning for just heart, for connection, for being valued for something other than just the job function. And nowadays, even more so, of course, the heart math tools and skills are enabling or teaching leaders how to do that because most of us were never brought up that way. But that fundamental shift in people saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't live this stress burned out life again. There's an opportunity for organizations to make a <laughs> shift and not have to lose people and it doesn't take a ton of work it's a shift mm -hmm. in priorities and attitude that can actually i believe and what i've seen actually result in more productivity and benefit for the company so in your work with business leaders today or recently what are the heart qualities that you see that make a more effective mm -hmm. ceo or leader there are so many right now because of what we've discussed the realization that the traditional way of measuring just statistics don't work anymore and that we can we have to respect first and that's the first one that i find that's very important is yeah. that the ceos and the leaders respect their workers which means they listen to them they actually foster um listening on their part and also to have them speak up to have the employees speak up because with, if it's all top down that's just not developing this sort of relationship where there is the creativity and innovation possible in the ranks because they're not given a chance and what happens when they have respect is that they feel more trust they mm -hmm. feel there's the trust and the bond with the organization then they can have an opportunity to a uh, few appreciate it and there's a kindness in a sense because they feel like that they are regarded as you said earlier not only just as a as a, a, a widget in this giant machine they are yeah. actually a human being with consideration and then another one is um gratitude having the ability to say thank you mm. that means so much more than even just uh, financial reward, which all, of course people work for financial reward, but more than anything now, they're looking for meaning and meaning comes from being appreciated. Meaning comes from being thanked. Meaning comes from understanding why they're doing what they're doing. And that comes from communication from the organization of having clarity of, of purpose and why. You know, you're interesting. You mentioned clarity of purpose because mm -hmm. I find that as people are able to manage their emotions and feel more appreciated, feel all you're talking about is care, feel cared for in an emotional or a genuine way, not just cared for with you know, a bonus or financial care, but mm -hmm. real care as a human being, that then they start getting in touch with their heart, like, what am I supposed to do in life? You know, what's fulfilling? What would make me happy? Your book, The Happy, you know, what is purpose? that would be rewarding and that's a mm -hmm. career path and i read somewhere recently that a lot of the reason workers employees are thinking about not going back to their old job is they want to switch careers they may not know what yet but they want mm -hmm. a different career path that's going to uh let them grow and find more of their creativity or the qualities that they want to pursue mm -hmm. what what do you have to say about that you're so right on um, because people are looking for meaning and both the Harvard uh, Business Review research as well as Gallup have shown that people are, as we discussed, leaving their job because they're looking for things that align more with their life purpose and that has meaning. And so what does that mean to have meaning? That means they feel like they align with whatever they're born. We're all born with a specific purpose in mind that we may not even remember because the society that we have have so much conditioned us to be a certain way you know you have, make more money you have a bigger house yeah. you have more cars you have an, another plane whatever it is it, it becomes more of a material stance whereas most of us really want to as you said connect 
to connect, to have meaning, to see some kind of um, result to what we do that comes from our work that makes a difference in the world. Right. So exactly. people are looking for that. I think people do want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Have you seen changes? I know there's still a lot of work from home mm -hmm. and a lot of companies want to bring employees back in the office and some are liking that and some want a hybrid, but that's sort of the external. Do you actually see leaders able to or willing to take on these changes we're talking about to add heart? Can you list any what changes you've seen from that? This is so interesting because yes, absolutely. In fact, the leaders are forced, if you will. They don't have a choice because the competition for talent, the competition for good workers for the, is intense right now because as we both said, people are shifting from yeah. where they have been to something else. Some of them know where they're going and some people don't know. But 50% of people are considering leaving before the end of the year where they are. And even if they don't know why, so the retention and recruitment are high on the list of all businesses. I take the Wall Street Journal and I can tell you almost every day, there's an article about a, a labor shortage, manpower, they call it oh, human power, I should rather call it manpower. Um, that is really um, scarce. We have the same number of people we did before the pandemic, but people are choosing differently. So the leaders on all organizations to compete to get the workers they want, they have to shift. They have to show respect. They have to recruit. They have to look at diversity. Um, they have to look at, at um, actually empowering their workers. They have to explain why they are in business. What is the purpose of this organization? How does it flow through to the person on the factory floor? So the humanity, maybe they don't use the word heart because it's a sensitive word for many, um, leaders because they're so used to talking about raw numbers, statistics. So the, the soft, squishy stuff, yeah. which actually is really what's powerful and what makes the business work is still something new for them to adapt. But the truth of it all, the, all the characteristics we're talking about, they're adopting some because they want to and others because they have to. Do they know how, I mean, I know how hard, I'm a psych behavioral psychologist by background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How hard it is to change behaviors. I mean, it's just like all the diversity. Oh, we're going to become a diverse company and it's more public image than actual change because that's hard stuff to do inside an organization unless you have a dedicated team owning that and facilitating that. I, I don't see people saying, okay, I've read a book and I'm being told I need to respect, I need to have compassion, I need to have care. Bingo, that's what I'm going to do. That stuff is going against the grain and resistances of a lot of how people are brought up. How are they implementing this? Do you see that people really, leaders really are changing? Um, that's why I'm so busy now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's a joke, but it's not a joke. It's sad because, yes, you're right, because most leaders grew up in a time where they were told that numbers are everything, but then they forget that numbers come from people. Yeah. And so a lot of times what happens is that they are pushing for things in a way that is not gonna get the result they want. So now it's come to a crisis point. Yeah. So they're looking for help, which is because they feel pressured for them, the numbers and they are embracing at least the concept of change. And then of course, as you say, being a psychologist, it's one thing to want to change and you know, how do you make it happen? And so for the ones who are successful, at least more than, we all stumble, let's just face right. it. Sure. But the ones who stumble less and who are more committed to picking themselves up and doing it again are making a difference. And the ones who admit that they are wrong at times, and that's really the key is to say, I'm sorry, I screwed up. Can yep. we do it together again? And that that's really is, where the success. That to me is the key, that true humility. Mm -hmm. and if you've been a CEO and identified with that leadership position or even a senior executive of any, mm -hmm. you haven't necessarily learned that humility. It can feel really foreign and scary actually. And 
you know, again, heart map, one of the things I've been so passionate about is the techniques and tools that we've developed that make this shift easier, make behavior change easier, mm -hmm. whether it's personal for your kids, for yourself, for workplaces, for leaders, because we all need tools. We all need to know how to shift the physiology that helps us shift our perceptions and powers up empowerment to shift attitude when we know mm -hmm. we need to instead of feeling stuck. And I think that's really essential these days, whether it's heart math tools or other tools. Um, we launched uh, this year, actually, a course, a new certification program for uh, workshop leaders, consultants, trainers called Activating the Heart of Teams, Creating mm -hmm. a Culture Where Teams Can Thrive. And in doing the research, because everything heart math does is science or research-based, the techniques, the tools to try to have the greatest efficacy. What we found is people need to shift to the heart, technically called heart-focused breathing. And the heart then sends a different signal to the brain and the higher brain centers that allow us to become more, mind, more aligned, mind, heart, emotions in alignment. We call mm -hmm. it coherence. And when that happens, we're much more present. We have the ability to act on how we wish we'd behave. And there's mm -hmm. a whole set of other tools, but in team building, you know, for diversity, for the unconscious biases we all have, for the things that separate us, mm -hmm. you know, being able to find more heart connection amidst of all that really can make a team thrive and can be very, very rewarding. And so we're being pulled at HeartMath to develop that type of a course for real diversity training instead of just parrot the words or no, you should. And some things need just to be brought to the street. That's an expression we use. But it takes tools and techniques and methods and proven methods for people to be able to do that hard work, actually, at times of shifting attitudes and behaviors, trying to make it easy for people. Because, I, I, again, I, people don't just change because they're told to. Mm -hmm. You're so right. And, and hard math is positioned perfectly to take it to take it to the corporations who really need it desperately. And yeah. I think because of this pandemic, even all the leaders have been personally impacted by the, by the, right. the mortality of, of themselves as well as everybody else that it actually helped to open their heart. And they probably are more receptive than they've ever been before for heart maps lessons. And that's a really good point. That's a gift of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. In amidst all the sadness and death and politics and pain, the mm -hmm. heart opening among millions throughout the world. Yeah. We have yeah. our customer service people, some of them in India, and they practice our heart map tools are very heart based. But it's the same there. It's the same with our trainers in Brazil mm -hmm. or Portugal. It's like I'm never, I'm never quite. And it, it, it always surprises me that we're all the same. It's the socioeconomic group, wherever you are, that's pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a lot of hope. And with our interconnectivity, that gives us a lot of hope. So this is contagious, just like the virus is contagious. <laughs> yes. The heart and the effectiveness of it, putting heart uh -huh. first. Can Absolutely. Be yeah. So one other point to talk about today is Consumers today, too, you know, our customers who we're serving are far more inclined to do business with companies that first and foremost do good for their own people, their customers, their clients, their vendors. Um, and that's also a financial imperative. And look at the stock market. The companies that are more socially conscious are actually doing better in some ways in the stock market. How do you see that contributing to this heart-based momentum? It seems like everything is moving in the same direction of saying, showing the world that heart-based activities, um, thinking, um, leadership is the only way to go because when we consider the whole, when we consider what used to be um, nice to have in work. In fact, when I first started work, they used to say, leave your personal life behind and come right. in and you know, just be at work. Now there's no longer that luxury, if that was a luxury. I think it's more um, handicapped because 
if we're not here all together, we cannot bring all our talents, experience, um, emotions even into the work, then we don't make the best decision. Exactly. And so now the leaders in business are realizing that. And if they don't realize that, the consumers are telling them because the consumers are for the first time because of social media is so much more powerful than they've ever been. They can actually boycott the company. They can choose a competitor or they can just choose another category altogether. So the leaders in large companies as well as small, a uh, 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 local store, if they say, oh, they don't treat the employees well, boom, the customers disappear. Every leader, big or small, has to shift the thinking and say, I have to be heart-centered, not only for the good of my people here, but the good for my business. So the thinking is much bigger than a nice to have. This is absolutely have to have now. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned about your personal life, because it used to be leave your emotions at the door, leave your personal exactly. life, just come in and be a, a worker bee. But leadership starts with oneself. We're leading our mm -hmm. own thoughts and feelings. We're leading our own attitudes, or they're just running us. And adding heart to leadership is really starting with one's personal life. We're leading our families, too, if we have Absolutely. children. So leadership is not just what your role is in the workplace and getting all those relationships aligned. It's really mm -hmm. important. And then more and more people are taking up personal growth processes and things where mm -hmm. they can learn to take charge more of their life, being more manage their lives, especially now you have to take charge uh, in this very challenging, changing, unpredictable time period. So again, tools, techniques, you know, people seek them out and there are some really good ones out there and HeartMath offers what we do in our technology to help people mm -hmm. learn self-regulation, self-empowerment and how to really put the heart first mm -hmm. in their lives. So important. Anything else you'd like to share, Marilyn, before we do our heart uh, focus meditation? Um, we talked about this um prior to our session and and I just want to give a couple of examples Please. of what's happening as far as the big businesses. You, you heard of Glassdoor, I'm sure. Glassdoor is the employer uh, review site that's open to the public. You can just go on glassdoor.com. Mm. And what it is that they review employers based on what the employees say. And so the shift into what people rate as a good employer is, is what you talked about, heart-centered work. Mm. And guess who's number one? Who? Is, is the Bain and Company, which as you know, is a consulting company. Yeah. Why, why are they number one? It's because they depend on people. That's all they have. They don't make machines, they don't make widgets. They use people to consult. So if they're not heart-centered, if they don't take care of their people, guess what? They lose everybody. They lose their business, yeah. <laughs> so I just want to use that as an illustration. McKinsey and Company, which is another one, um, consulting company, they're both. Um, Bain and Company comes in 4.6 out of 5. Bain and Company, um, McKinsey comes in 4.5. Both of those companies rely on people and they are using their hard skills to retain and, mm. and foster them because there's no other way. Another one that I want to mention is um, Microsoft. The company in also at 4.5. And you know what the CEO says? The CEO says empathy is the mm -hmm. center to our innovation. Yeah. And that means whatever way they recognize that without their people, without encouraging them to be fully there, they don't have innovation. And in a tech company, if you don't have any innovation, you're dead because you become obsolete quite quickly. So I just want to use those examples I, as heart center is so powerful. I like that because the consulting companies like McKinsey and Bain, 
they can teach others, they can consult with the leadership and right. help them with tools. And a tech company or any company, the, the leader that talks about empathy, they're setting a tone. That becomes a tone for the culture. The leader sets a culture for the team. And I think we all realize that our responsibility in that. So art, adding heart, art first, can set a culture where people can thrive. And that's <laughs> really what our goal is. So Absolutely. let's, thank you. Let's close now with a heart-focused meditation. Mm -hmm. Add heart to our own leadership, whether it's in our team, our family, our community, or just of ourselves. And do this little meditation together that we can each practice during the next month to energize our intentions to lead from the heart. So let's start by focusing on our heart and breathing in a feeling of love or appreciation for something or someone in your life that you care about. And that helps warm the heart and helps us connect deeper in the heart. Now, as you continue this heart-focused breathing, feel your heart connecting with the people you lead at work, at home, in your community, or just leading yourself. Connect in your heart with what is it that you do lead? As you're doing this, ask yourself, where could you add more heart to your leadership? Which heart qualities do you want to add more of? Is it appreciation, kindness, respect, authenticity, humility? care. There's a whole lot of heart qualities, attributes associated with the heart. And science has shown that each one of them brings more coherence and alignment between heart and mind and activates our higher potentials. Now let's each make a heartfelt commitment to put the heart first more in our interactions. To add more heart wherever we can and remembering to do it. And the heart radiates with each heartbeat and energy. And that energy is qualified by our feelings. We can put out heart and stress and frustration. We can put out heart and love and care and appreciation and many other qualities that go out each time we breathe on the electromagnetic field of the heart produced by each breath. So let's visualize ourselves together, all the people listening to this podcast, doing this heart meditation, co-creating a reservoir of positive heart energy that we can each access as needed over the next month and help re-energize our intentions to add heart, to put heart first.
And let's close this heart meditation by holding in our hearts with compassion, all who are experiencing difficulties these days, suffering hardships through these times. Let's just hold in our heart and know that it can help lift our spirit and their spirit. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Oh, thank you. That was fun. I hope you got what you needed. Oh, any last words you want to share with everybody, Marilyn? Um, I think anything is to realize that when you're in your heart, everybody wins. Mm. Because sometimes there's a, a fear because we grow, grew up in a society where there's always a competition. It's always, you have to be better than somebody else. But when you're in your heart, it's actually lifting everybody up to another level. Right. So not to look at it as, as win-lose or you know you have to win at the expense of somebody else. We can all win in a different way because we're not you know, competing in a sense. It will almost bring everybody up. So I, like I would that. like to say. <laughs> Thank you. Well, then we call that the power and intelligence of the heart, and it's just being scientifically validated, and uncovered, and each of us can practice it. Thank so you. appreciate everybody in this podcast, and please join us next month. It will launch our Ad Heart podcast on Tuesday, October 16th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Until then, take care. Thank you. Thank you.